Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we're going to look at one way to find the last row in a range of data. Specifically, we'll look at the special cells method of the range object to grab the last used cell in our worksheet. Just a quick note, this slide will repeat in each of my videos on finding the last row since we'll follow the same format and cover the same examples in each video just with different techniques. Please skip to the next timestamp if you prefer. So, one of the most common tasks that you would come across in VBA is finding the last use row of a data range. Three common use cases for finding the last row are Identify the full range of data that you may want to perform some task over Example, to loop over the data, change the formatting for the data, etc. Copy and paste the range of data elsewhere. This is a continuation of point one. But a more specific and common example would be where you want to copy the data and paste it into another worksheet or workbook. Paste new data at the bottom of our existing data. That is, we need to find the first row of unused data below our data range and paste in new data there. We will cover each of these three examples in this video. And just a bit of housekeeping, I want to mention that there are many ways of performing the same activities presented in this video. For this video, we will not spend much time discussing alternatives. This video is designed to deep dive into just the technique of finding the last row using the special cells property. I have separate videos that discuss each alternative method and one video that briefly discusses all methods together and suggests which one to use and when. Please do check those out as well. Similar to other methods for finding the last row, we can find the last row using special cells directly in Excel. Let's check how to do that first in Excel and then we will perform the same operation through VBA. In the home ribbon, let's go to find and select and then go to special. We have a list of options here. For now, we are only interested in the last cell. Click OK and the last used cell in our data will be selected, which is cell J12. And just for fun, let's do this via shortcuts. Press Ctrl G then all test to go to the specials option and all test again to select the last cell. And finally, enter. We back to J12. The advantage of using special cells is even if our data range has blank cells or blank rows or blank columns, we will still be able to locate the last cell. For that reason, this technique is superior to just using the range.n property or the current region property. But on the other hand, if the cell doesn't have any values, but there is a formula or formatting in it, the special cells will still consider it as a use cell. Depending on what outcome you're after, this may or may not be what you want. If you're just after cells with values in them, then the most superior technique is the find method. So let's just do another example. We'll fill the background of the cell with yellow. Let's do our shortcuts again. Control G, Alt S, Alt S and enter. This time, our last use cell is J17. That's because the last use column is J and the last use row is 17. Okay, so the last cell option in special cells gives you the last use cell. And from that last use cell, we can grab the row or the column or the address of that cell. Before moving on to the code and examples, there is one thing to note here. The last use cell won't reset automatically, even if you clear the values or formulas or formatting from that cell. You need to save the workbook first. Let's have a look at this scenario. So this cell has a color in it. So what we can do is just delete this row. Okay, now the last use row is row 12 because we have removed every evidence of the colored cell by deleting the row. So I'm not gonna save this workbook yet. Let's use our shortcuts again. Control G, Alt S, Alt S and enter. Special cells still thinks cell J17 is the last use cell. That is, we still get the old result and that's because we didn't save our changes. So let's do that now. I'm gonna save this workbook and do the same thing again. Control G, Alt S, Alt S and enter. And this time we get the correct result, which is J12. So that's just something to be mindful of. Okay, moving on. Before we begin coding, I just want to mention that throughout this video, I will refer to the worksheet using the worksheet code name. So instead of going this workbook dot sheets and the worksheet name, we can directly refer to the worksheet using just its code name. And the code name can be found in the properties menu out here. There are many benefits to this, but we won't get into it now. Okay, moving on. Now, let's grab the last cell through PPA. First, we'll declare a variable to hold the value of the last row number. Let's refer to cell A1. You can call special cells from any cell and it'll give you the same answer as the last cell. But just to be consistent, we'll stick to A1. Let's choose special cells. Now, we see pretty much the same options we saw in Excel. We will choose the last cell option, which is this one right here. This will return the last cell, 
but we are after the row of that last cell. Let's print this and see what we get. We get row 12, which is the right answer. Similarly, we can grab the last column. The only difference is that we are referring to the column instead of row. Let's print this. We get column number 10 and column J is column number 10. So that's the right answer. And we can grab the address of the last cell as well. So now we'll refer to the address property. Let's run this. So the address of a last used cell is J12, which is the correct answer. Okay, moving on to the examples. Let's identify the full data range and select it. First, we'll find the last row, same way as what we have done before. Our data range lies between columns A and column J. To select this data range, we will start from the first cell, that is the cell in the top left corner, which in our case is A1. And to find the last cell, in the bottom right corner, we will look in column J and use a last row variable. So starting from A1, right up until column J, and then use our last row variable. And what do we want to do with this range? We want to select it. Let's run this. Great, our range is selected, but this assumes that we know the last column in our data set. If you have decided to use special cells, then you may have factored in that you may not know what the last row or the last column is. To solve this, we can identify the range using the address property. And just to mix it up a bit, let's add a few blank rows out here. And remember, we need to save the file. So first, let's find the address of the last used cell. And let's identify our range again. So we will still start from cell A1. And we will extend the range up until the address of the last cell that we just found up right here. Okay, let's select this. Let's run this and see if it works. That's great. Our entire range has been selected, including the blank rows which were contained within our data range. Fantastic. Moving on to the next example. Here, we'll identify a range of data as we did in the previous segment and we will copy it over to a new worksheet. So, we will copy this data and paste it into a new worksheet starting in cell A1. Let's clear the contents on the destination worksheet first. Let's identify the data range that we want to copy. So we're going to use the address property, same way what we did in the last example. So this is our data range, which includes the address of the last cell. And what do we want to do now? We want to copy this range. And where do we want to paste it? We will add the first cell of the destination that we want to copy the data over to. That is range A1 in our copy to worksheet. And just to be tidy, let's auto resize the destination columns. Okay, that's it. Let's run this. So this is our original data range. And we can see that the entire data range has been copied over. Great. So this works well. Let's move on. We'll identify the first unused row after our data range and paste in new data here. This is the data that we want to copy over. And instead of copying the full range of data, we'll copy the data line by line. No reason for this. It's just to make this example a bit different from my other videos on last row. So let's grab the last row of the data that we want to copy over. So this is the last use row of the copy from worksheet. We will loop through this range, copy each row of data, find the first unused row after the last use row in our invoice worksheet and paste the data into that row. Let's declare a variable to hold the first unused row. Let's create the loop. First, an iteration variable. Our data in a copy from worksheet starts from row two and the loop will extend up until the last use row on that data range, which is this variable right here. Let's close the loop first. So first let's find the last use row in our original data range. So first we're gonna find this row, which is row number 12, and we'll add one to it, which will give us the first unused row. So this is our last use row. And to find the first unused row, we just add one to it. And now we will copy the current row from our copy from worksheet. Our data extends from columns A to J. And we want to grab the data from the current row from those columns. And the current row is row I. 
Let's copy this and paste it into the first cell of our unused row. And our unused row is the one that we just found up here. And that's it. Let's run this and see what we get. Great. Our two lines of data have been pasted here. Before we conclude, let's look at a bonus example where we delete all the blank rows in a worksheet. Let's add in some blank rows here. So specifically, we want to just delete the blank rows that are contained inside our used range. We're not trying to skim the entire worksheet because that wouldn't be ideal. So here's the code for it. We won't go through the entire code in detail, but I'll just explain what it's doing. So first we find the last used row, which will be row 15 and we'll start looping upwards. So that limits our loop from row 15 to row one. If the last row is greater than one, that means if there is data in the worksheet or there is at least more than one row, only then run this procedure and the loop will start from the last used row to the very top row. And what it is going to do is going to count the number of cells with values in that particular row. If the count of all values in that row is zero, or in other words, if there is no cell with any value in it, then that means it's a blank row and we will delete that row. That's pretty much the sub. Let's run this and see how it works. Okay, all the blank rows got deleted. And just a quick mention out here, all of this code is available on my blog site and the link will be posted in the description below. And that's it for finding the last row using the special cells method. You could easily search for the last column using the same technique. This is an efficient way to find the last row if your data is not continuous. That is, if your data set has blank rows or blank columns. But be mindful of the fact that formatting and formulas are also considered as used cells, which can affect the outcome of what you're after. And as mentioned earlier, there are other ways to find the last row. I have separate videos on those as well as a video combining and comparing different techniques. Please check those out as well. So which method do you prefer and why? Please let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks and see you in the next one.